Dear participants, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to the second Evora webinar on advancing leadership at higher education level and beyond by women directors of technical universities. After having successful, well participated first webinar on this team two weeks ago, now we are going to have the second one. This session will be chaired by Professor Pamela Giles, former principal, vice chancellor of Glasgow Caledonian University, and also board member of a European a Women Rectors Association. We have three distinguished speakers, Professor Anne Borg, Rector of Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Professor Anna Costa Freitas, former rector of Evora University and president of Portuguese Association of <laughs> Women in Science. Professor Tunjai Duerolu, former rector of Eskişehir Technical University. <laughs> Dear participants, as you know, She Figures has been started to be published by European Commission since 2013. We have had the last version in 2021 and 2022. If we look at the figures related to women leadership in higher education, we can easily see the very low representation of women at top positions. The situation is even worse for technical universities across Europe. As it has been stated by European Institution for Gender Equality, in terms of gender equality in higher education, improvements are slow, too slow. As Evora, we intended to bring this, this issue into the attention of higher education networks and beyond. We hope to bring this the issue once more to the attention of all parties in the higher education world. We have had a strong support from CESAR, IAU, IAUP, and UNICA. I would like to thank each and every one of these prestigious higher education networks for their support. Now it's time to start. I would like to give the floor to our chair, Professor Pamela, Pamela Giles. Floor is yours, Pamela. Thank you so much, Gilson. Um, thank you for the introduction to our webinar today. You are, without doubt, one of the most inspirational past female rectors in the whole of Europe, and you continue to be an enduring and dynamic driving force behind Ewara and its success. This is, as Gulson said, the second, se second webinar in this series on leadership by Ewara, and I would urge you to also catch up with the first session on YouTube moderated by the Rector of the Universidad Católica Portuguesa, Professor Isabel Gill. And in that webinar, Gulson outlines uh, the data demonstrating that whilst there are many, many young female researchers coming through the ranks, so few of them uh, managed to obtain positions of leadership in our universities. So these webinars allow us a unique opportunity to get behind this kind of evidence and data and explore the factors that promote women as leaders in our universities and the barriers to improving the current situation. And we are able to do this by listening to the stories and experiences of the three exceptional leaders and scientists who have joined us today. Let me briefly introduce them. Firstly, Professor Anne Borg. Now, Anne was appointed as Rector of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in 2019, having had a stellar career within the university as firstly a professor in physics, a vice dean, dean of the faculty of natural sciences, pro-rector, acting rector, that's a tough role, and finally, rector. Anne is a very distinguished scientist who has published widely in the area of 
condensed matter physics. And she's been president of the Norwegian Physical Society and currently chairs the Scientific Advisory Committee. Secondly, Professor Anna Costa Freistas. Anna is currently president of the Portuguese Association of Women in Science, Amanet. She is also a renowned scholar and scientist in food science and technology and a former rector of the University of Evora, where she, um, she actually uh, was elected for two terms from 2014. Anna has diligently served on many, many educational boards, commissions and steering groups, including the Higher Education Group of the European Commission and as a councillor in the Office of the Political Councillors of the President of the European Commission. The first ever female Dean of Faculty at Evora, Anna is a Professor of Chemistry with a distinguished research career. And she also writes regularly for the newspaper, Publico. Finally, last but by no means least, Professor Tunji Dogaroglu. Tunji is a chemical engineer by scientific training and has authored over a hundred papers on air quality and environmental pollution. She served as Vice Dean, then as Dean of the Faculty of Engineering at Anadolu University from 2010 to 16. Elected as Rector of Eskizahir University from 2018 to 2022, Tunji has also served on many, many boards over the years, including the European Society for Engineering Education and as Vice President at the Higher Education Quality Council in Turkey. Tunji is currently a member of the prestigious National Nanotechnology Research Centre Board of Governance. Welcome all panellists. It's a real privilege for me to be here with you today. And before I begin our conversation together, I'd like to remind all participants on the webinar today to please write your questions in the chat box so that I can keep my eye on them and put some of them to our panel later. So the first question, and this will be to all panellists. Panellists, can you briefly describe for us your own personal career paths to becoming a rector? Identify any of the hurdles that you met, how you overcame them, and whether there were any special mentors along the way who gave you a helping hand. So can I put that question first to Anne? Thank you, uh, Pamela. Uh, yeah, that was uh, some, some uh, it's actually a big question. Uh, I have to admit that I actually uh, never had in my plan to become a leader. So, and I, I think that uh, that is quite uh, common. Uh, I've loved actually working with the students and working with my research uh, that's been driving me. Uh, but as you, you were referring to my career, uh, I started out as a vice dean, worked for eight years, eight years. And then when the, the dean was stepping, stepping down, um, he actually encouraged me to think, could I actually take a role as a dean? Uh, and he knew that I had I was uh, had interest in uh, in university policies and and also had a little bit of leadership training, but uh, that was I needed that push actually to to uh, to uh, move forward, um, and um, I actually liked the job. I was planning on continuing uh, as a dean for or applying for another period, but then. My rector that was into his studying on his second term asked me to apply for a vice rector position. So uh, I chose to do that again. Uh, well, I, I had, hadn't, well, that was easier for me in a way because I've been working a lot on educational matters throughout my career. So, uh, and this was within education and that was in many ways a little easier than deciding to become a dean. Um, but then I also became his deputy. Uh, and we discussed a little bit whether I would go for the rector position when he, he finished his uh, second term. We have two terms uh, in Norway. Um, uh, but I, we hadn't gotten that far in the discussion. And then suddenly he decided to step down. 
And since I was, then I had to step up. And I, I think you were asking if there were some hurdles. I think that I realized that being a deputy, actually, I hadn't really thought of what would that mean if he fell ill or if I actually had to to take 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 his role. Uh, and uh, so I think that, uh, I, I mean, I like my job, but I, I mean, it, a learning point for me was actually that I have to prepare the people around me really to prepare that, well, for some reasons you may have to step in and uh, you have to think about that if you say yes to doing, uh, to, to take on a task. Uh, in Norway, I mean, uh, and uh, my university is the largest university in, in Norway. Um, we have a national role in science and technology, and and in in Norway, this is a, I mean, it's it's large, uh, it's high visibility being a rector at our university. So I have actually, I mean, some of the things that I I I have been working on is really. Uh, um taking the space using mentors and help have people helping me out with presentation communication skills building good teams i mean and really to have and 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 uh, learn or practice i mean i'm i'm talking to the minister my minister uh, quite frequently and to all kinds of politicians so it's a very different role from from the one you have uh, uh, at other leadership uh, levels. So I think that these are some of the things that we could perhaps just discuss a little bit. But I think it's important to be aware that being a rector is a very different uh, position at the university compared to most other positions, and and that was really a wake up. Uh, call for me when I actually stepped uh, stepped into uh, into this position. And and Anne, I've heard from many many other leaders and and rectors around the world that they never and they're all female. They never plan to become mm. the vice chancellor or the rector. But mm. what was interesting in your story is that there were male mentors along the way mm. who encouraged you to have yeah. a go. Yeah. In, uh, and I've actually had also from my very beginning, I had a very good mentor, uh, a male mentor. Uh, uh, so uh, I think that has been highly valu valuable for different uh, steps of, of my career. Thank you so much. Anna, can I put the same question to you about your personal sure. journey? Hello, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for inviting me for this, uh, this webinar. And uh, well, I suppose um, probably my view is a bit different because I was, um, I, was, I started my career at Evra University, then I changed to Lisbon when I made my PhD and I was at the chemistry department for a long time. I'm not a chemist, I'm an agronomist. So it was not okay for me to, uh, to go for the higher places, I mean, even full professor on a chemistry department because it was not my area of expertise. And I think that I always wanted to go further. So that's why I changed to Evora because they had opened a, a course in uh, food science and I thought it would be interesting. They invited me to go there and I changed. I changed because I really wanted to go to the top. Okay. okay. Being a full professor, at least, I don't know if I immediately thought of being rector, but I still remember that I was invited to be vice rector after being there for four or five years. And I remember saying to one of my sons, my, my kids, I mean, not my son or my daughter, that, well, well, okay, my objective is to be become a rector. So it is a bit different of what was said before. Um, if I can say that I had a mentor, yes, my father probably, because he had only daughters and, she, and we were prepared to go wherever we wanted. That's what, how they, he raised us. So I think this was my objective. Of, of course, it's difficult. Now let's say about the bad things. It's difficult for a woman because 
when you, if I say to someone, yes, I want to become a rector, they would say, oh, they have, she has an ambition which is unbelievable. No, no one says this for a man. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is the, the different things. So, mm -hmm. uh, so this is what, and then Evora is in Alentejo. Uh, I think Lusum knows Evra, other people don't, but it's completely male oriented. So the first time I applied, I didn't come. And it, of course, everybody thought it was not possible for a woman to become rector at Evra University. So this was, I mean, I didn't want, and I went to Brussels because there was a part that I wanted to understand the European Commission which I couldn't, of course, but I don't know if anyone can, but after three years, but it was important for me. And I came back with this, uh, well, well I, I always kept the idea of applying again. Then I applied again. I won at the second time because the first time I didn't have absolute majority. So we had to go through again. And it was the worst period of my life because like one month between one election and the other, one or two months, I went, we had to apply again. And I didn't know what else I could do. And I did realize that it was just because, um, well, I was a woman, it was difficult at the time. But then I, one day the click was in my mind and I applied, I won. And I must say that I loved being a rector for two, to, to mandates, I liked it very much. I think it's it's important. Of course, we have a visibility that I was not aware, mm -hmm. I must say. And just to give the, the idea in Evra, and it was my my brother brother-in-law who told me, the rector is the second person on the protocol in Evra. So it is really important. Everybody, still now, everybody knows you, it is a sm small town. The students knows you, everybody knows. One of the things I think it's important because it's a small university is that you talk to everybody. And for me, it was very important. I like education very much. I think it's wonderful to see that the, the young people when they grow up in an university. So I could talk to them very much. I had a very good relation with all the academics, the assemblies of the, on the city and of course I mean I think it was important for me and it is important for my kids and my grandchildren they were very proud and for me this is quite important as well because I think they can be prepared to go whatever they want because they see it's possible and they were proud of this and so they can mm -hmm. this is an example they can so uh, as um, I think this is all <laughs> So you well, had yes, a very, very different story to Anne because you yes, had a lot of very different um, stories. strong, <laughs> strong personal motivation, um, yes, a lot, yes. of, a lot of self confidence, mm. belief in your ability. You absolutely knew that, but you had to be determined and persistent yeah, to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was difficult because you know once I received. Um, a uh, group of people who are the association of uh, uh, pigs uh, of Alentejo, something pigs, you know, pigs, yeah, yeah. you know, the, 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 and they said they asked me something, and I said well, I really don't know, and the answer was it's just men in my office. It was all five or six or seven, and the, the answer was how can you be director and not knowing this, which was very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Then I asked something of them for. Like for instance, oh no, we have, uh, I think was, we have architecture as a course here at university. Yes, I didn't know. And I said, how can you be in Evra and not knowing this? And so, and then they say, okay, yeah, we are recording. Okay, okay, you're right, you, you were right. We were a bit aggressive. So at the beginning, I received a lot of people that were there just to say to me in a very polite ways, what are you doing here? Yeah, so it was not, uh, but I think it was, a challenge and mm. I think I won it so for me it was good. <laughs> uh, absolutely for all of us it was good yes. that you won too. Yes. Thank you so much. Tunji, can I ask you the same question? 
Uh, thank you, Pamela. Uh, more or less, uh, the same uh, question was posed uh, to me by the students, female students, in an interview I had uh, with the female students last year, actually. The student's question was about whether I had uh, a strategy, clear strategy, to be a camp director. When I thought uh, about it, uh, I realized that uh, I didn't have any uh, clear strategy to become a uh, rector mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Anne. <laughs> uh, I would like to admit uh, that all my administrative duties, uh, actually, including uh, the rectorate position, uh, came one after the other without uh, my request. In that respect, uh, perhaps I was very lucky uh, being offered uh, some tasks without uh, asking is very flattering, of course, uh, but it also puts a heavy uh, responsibility on your uh, shoulders. Mm. Mm. Uh, I have to admit that my uh, position as a rector came uh, at the time uh, I did not expect, actually. It was a surprise for me that I was appointed a newly established university as well as uh, a technical university. While I was serving uh, as the vice president of the National Higher Education Quality uh, Council in that period. In 2018, uh, Eskisher Technical University was newly established uh, and I served as the founding director of this university between 2018 and 2022. The task uh, of structuring a newly established university, uh, laying uh, the first milestones and determining the roadmap was undoubtedly an important responsibility for me. The most important uh, thing, uh, the university's mission, vision, uh, and values uh, had to be determined uh, and the roadmap uh, had to be laid out in a, a way befitting a uh, technical university. Uh, I think uh, it is a great advantage for me to have uh, been Dean of Faculty of Engineering and mm -hmm. uh, for many years before Vice Dean uh, position also in the same mm -hmm. uh, faculty and to have uh, the opportunity uh, to get to know the national higher education ecosystem uh, closely at the uh, Higher Education Council and Higher Education Quality Council uh, studying period. These experiences I gained before uh, were a guide uh, in the establishment uh, of the technical university. We aimed uh, to progress uh, with the goal of uh, being a research university, participatory management, uh, mm -hmm. collaborations, and uh, co-creation. Successful uh, management was a team effort and required to act with the motto of achieving together. At the end of uh, four years, uh, the increase in research outputs uh, the improvement uh, in the entrepreneurship and innovation index rankings, the increase uh, in the institutional uh, belonging of uh, the students, faculty and administrative uh, staff, and the positive developments in the satisfaction uh, of the staff and uh, strategic stakeholders. Uh, have been a source of pride uh, for a newly established uh, university. Uh, of course, I have had a couple of male and uh, female uh, role models throughout uh, my career, like other leaders. Uh, you have role models throughout uh, your career uh, journey, career path, but you implement what you have learned and experienced in your own uh, unique way, of course. Uh, one of the uh, male uh, uh, the role models and mentors uh, is very important uh, for my life and uh, for my uh, uh, career uh, pathway. Uh, this is this is uh, my uh, journey as a as a result. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you so much, Tunji. So uh, for at least two of you, and certainly for me personally too, uh, having. Uh, a male mentor who was willing to put you forward or support you through your career, especially in a 
technical or a STEM university uh, was an important thing. For me, it helped me overcome imposter syndrome. I don't know if, I know Anna didn't feel uh, that she had any imposter syndrome, uh, but so many young professors, female professors, research fellows who are women uh, do feel this, especially at an early mm. stage in their career. Any thoughts on that, Anne? Yeah, I think um, uh, I think that, that, well, I guess I would put it a little differently, but I mean, this implicit bias that we know from research uh, and I, I think, I think we've seen it. I mean, when we have been in, on committees, when you talk about research projects and you look at the CV, uh, or if you're sort of on a on a on a on a on a board looking for promotion to professor, uh, then often you hear that. Um, I mean, if if you if 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 men are publishing in a sort of a on a wide range of topics, they have a scientific breadth. If if it's a female, she's not able to focus. And 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 this implicit some of these things that are there, uh, and 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 we we have to be aware of them because they are they are there. And of course, men tend. Uh, tend to um, hire men, and they speak highly and positively about their male um, colleagues. So I think uh, Anna was actually—I mean, you were sort of uh, touching upon that in 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 what way you 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 uh, uh, you were approached uh, at the beginning. I think that's quite interesting because I think very many still today uh, and. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I've been around for many years by now. Uh, I think women or female uh, academics, they often find find that they, they really have to be better to be compared, to be at the same same level. And I think that is a challenge in, in, in general, but I think also this could be a challenge in in the sense of being sort of a more personal barrier for thinking that you could actually become a rector or a, have, taking leadership responsibility in academia because it's so much embedded in the culture. Yeah, so um, all three of you are positive role models for the young women. Uh, how important uh, do you feel in terms of taking down the barriers to, to younger women coming forward to leadership roles? How important do you think that is? that you are actively positive in positioning uh, female leadership? Well, if I, if I yeah. start with Anna. Okay, so I think one of the, the, the things that we should do is exactly these webinars. I mean, it's, I mean this is very important uh, um, because you have to show the examples. You have to be able to be proud of what you have done. And you have to show that it is possible because, because of what Anne said before, male tend to prefer males. And this has this, and so this is what we have to, to change. I mean, we have to cut it somewhere. And so this is, and we have to be the models and we have to be enthusiastic about this. I have, uh, we have a program. I, had, I made my first activity program for the AMONET, so the Association of the Portuguese Scientists. And a lot of things to, to, we should do this year, which are some webinars that we already made one, now the other one is, in, is development and social development, economic and social development by women. And we have, I mean, Graça Carvalho, which is a, a, a European uh, deputy or whatever. And then two young females that have attained the higher, one of them has created a company, the other is on the European bank, and she's from engineering, has a PhD, and then he changed, she changed. And then this is this year, then we have also a last month, which is one of the things that, yeah, female, it is, the numbers are there that females are more, more pr uh, prone to have to be a last month. It's not, uh, sexual harassment, justice, even harassment at the 
uh, work, co uh, work conditions. We have another one in October. And then the last one is science and, and, and communication. Then we will do also some, um, some <coughs> infographies and with the numbers and the figures to show people. But next year, what I want to do is some courses on leadership some webinars like this one and probably we can do it also with Evra we have make can make them more broad than just Portuguese because I have been learning and studying about how can we improve leadership by women and one of the things is give them more confidence that they can do it so leadership courses I think mm -hmm. it's important in at, not just at academia but as, uh, also for enterprises so I think this is the next step, because like we had the symposium we have here in December when Gosson was here. And the point is, if, why can't we change this? I mean, the, the, the situation is now now for a long time. Yes, we don't attain the leadership positions. Everybody knows, and we cannot, we are still have not figured out how to break this. Uh, so I think that probably the courses, we have to give more confidence. Because when they, and I have this experience at my university, now it is also a rector, a woman. Then like on the science and technology school, so my university is a comprehensive one, but the science and technology school has never been a woman as a director. And now it's a woman. Mm -hmm. All schools at university, school of arts is a woman. Um, school of no, the others not, not. but the, the 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 directors of the services, just one was woman when I went, and now three of them are women, just one man. So things ch start to change when they realize it is possible. Yeah. So I think that's the 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 main issue that we should be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. And as as you said, Anna, we this data has been with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know that we have as many females coming through uh, as researchers as men, but only a quarter of a quarter of them ever become professors, full professors, and then take up leadership mm -hmm. roles. Uh, Tunji, in your in your experiences um, and in being a rector, did you feel that was one of the ways you tried to overcome the barriers? For women in your institution to encourage encourage them forward with promote positive promotion policies, especially women who perhaps were having a career break for the children, so on and so forth. What was your experience there? Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, thank you, uh, Pamela. Uh, in my view, uh, there are a few core uh, key barriers actually to increasing uh, the proportion of women leading, not only uh, in technical universities, but also uh, in the higher education uh, system. Such these uh, three uh, key barriers as uh, balancing uh, work and uh, home uh, life, devaluation of achievements, and the imposter syndrome. This is, uh, this, these three uh, key barriers is uh, really important. Uh, I tried to create some solutions, uh, these, uh, this kind of uh, challenges during my uh, rectorate uh, positions. Uh, if uh, we evaluate technical universities, also in our universities, uh, the lack uh, of uh, representation and role models of women in uh, STEM fields, especially uh, in leadership positions. And uh, the gender uh, stereotypes and biases uh, that discourage uh, the girls, uh, female yeah. students, and also women uh, researchers from uh, pursuing uh, STEM education and careers also. Uh, the structural uh, and uh, the institutional uh, barriers that uh, create a hostile and unwelcoming uh, environment uh, for women in uh, STEM and also in our university. The personal and family challenges that women uh, face in balancing uh, their professional and personal uh, lives, such as uh, childcare uh, responsibilities, uh, career breaks, and mobility uh, constraints. Of course, I try to, to uh, do something uh, to remove uh, these kind of uh, challenges uh, in the last uh, four years. Uh, 
Uh, what can I add? Providing flexible uh, work arrangements uh, also during the pandemic uh, period, uh, it works. Uh, and family-friendly uh, policies uh, that enable women to balance uh, their work and home life without comprising their career uh, prospects. Uh, actually, we put uh, these kind of issues to our uh, strategic plan and action plan. Uh, we have already prepared a, a gender equality plan. Uh, we try to follow all these uh, uh, issues uh, related with the, uh, these uh, things. And uh, providing more opportunities and resources for uh, women's uh, professional development and career advancement in uh, STEM fields, increasing the visibility and recognition of women's uh, achievements and contributions uh, in STEM uh, fields. And promoting, uh, of course, culture of diversity, uh, not only in uh, the university and also uh, our uh, strategic uh, stakeholders, uh, equity and uh, inclusion in STEM uh, issues mm -hmm. in our uh, university and other uh, other uh, organizations. And uh, challenging and uh, changing uh, the negative stereotypes and attitudes uh, towards uh, women in uh, Sita. I know uh, it takes uh, time and uh, effort uh, to eliminate this kind of challenges, but we have to start uh, from, uh, from one uh, part of these uh, difficulties to solve it. Uh, mm. Perhaps it, uh, it is necessary to change, uh, to renew and processing, uh, starting to back uh, a little bit mm. earlier stage, uh, for example, from uh, preschool or uh, kindergarten stage, we to give this kind of uh, responsibilities. Uh, I think it's uh, insufficient representation of women. It's a uh, really uh, big issue, especially in the field of science and technology needs to improve. Uh, the female representation rate uh, of up to 50 to 60 percent in some fields, uh, such as biology and chemistry, but uh, still in some uh, fields, it's very few, for example, uh, up to 12 or 15, maybe less, in the fields of computer, electrical and electronics engineering, and yeah. uh, mechanical engineering uh, departments. Uh, yeah. Shows that there is still a lot of uh, homework to do uh, uh, to it in this in this uh, regards. Uh, but it takes time, uh, probably. Uh, we did something, but four years was not so uh, long time uh, to, to to realize some some projects. I I think that's a, a very good, well made point, Tunji. That four years or even two terms, Anna, is that sufficient to allow? I think the culture change that you were describing, mm -hmm. Anne, to to mm -hmm. actually come to fruition and mm -hmm. be sustainable within the organization. Uh, and we often see, and, and I'm, I'm going to generalise here, but men hopping from one institution to another, uh, almost appearing to try to go to better institutions over short periods of time, when perhaps what we need is consolidated leadership to encourage and support culture change. But you've all described some very practical, strategic and structural things that we need to do. But I'm very struck through your stories uh, by the fact that perhaps, as a famous businessman said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So sure. what would each of you prioritize? And Tunji, you gave us a big list of what you've been doing, and I know everything in that list needs to be done. But if I start with you, Anne, what would you prioritize as a way of trying to you know, reverse this unconscious bias. I mean, it's deeply ingrained, isn't it? But what kinds of cultural things do you think we need to do? Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I th I think that um, well, uh, this is a wide question, and and I have to say that in Norway we have had a lot of measures for for a long time. So so for example, 
uh, uh, child care. I mean, a lot of these things that, that could be os obstacles are, are, are certainly uh, not there. But I think that, um, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, Avora group is very important at the same time. I think that with culture, I think we actually need to mainstream the topics. It's not something that you do on the site, but it's an integral part in all that we do. That that we are uh, uh, that we are discussing. Uh, I mean, gender and diversity as part of. I mean, how are we behaving uh, within uh, our academic community? So, so if I, I if I would say one thing, I think that would be an, a very important uh, thing. I don't. I mean, I, I I would be happy the day that we can say that. Well, I mean, now there are some issues. I mean, how are we sort of helping everyone in their careers uh, in a good way? Mm -hmm. And then we have, of course, have to also to realize that. Academic careers are quite competitive in in uh, in very many aspects, and and uh, and 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 that not, may not suit everyone. I think that, that uh, you were asking just going a little bit back to your former question. I think that, I mean, my role at this point. I think we have all the regulations in place, but it's more to see the individuals ask them i mean as i was asked i mean is this uh, i mean you know that it's an academic route and we need to support you is also a route towards leadership something for you i mean uh, we need to to really to take care and 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 do all the things that that was all already mentioned um but but i think this is important um I think one more thing that I've been more and more aware of, and that applies not only to leadership or to sort of promoting a leadership career, but it also applies to academic career. I think that we have not been systematic enough in the sense that how are we or the leaders uh, preparing or supporting the individual in making their career plan and what do they need for example a leadership course if you would like to do something uh, for example become a leader at, at, a, at a level I mean how do we do this in a more systematic way and I still think that uh, that uh, even though we have a lot of of measures in place I think that that is really something that still lacks uh, at least that I would say for my own institution, we are working on it, but really to do this systematically and and well for for all all the academic staff, that is uh, that it, then we have some work, still quite some work to do. Thank you so much, Anne. And our participants online have been asking some questions, and in fact, they follow a fair, fairly similar pattern. They want to ask each of you. What are the three most important factors for you steering the university in the right direction? And I know, Anna, you want to come in here. Mm -hmm. Anna? What are the most important? Yeah, what are, the, what are the three most, or even one or two most important factors uh, that have influenced the steering of your university in the right direction? Okay, I think there are three big, one, one of the most important thing is that you have to listen to people. I mean, uh, everybody at university. So you have to listen, you have to make them get involved because you cannot go against people. I mean, it's very difficult. I always say that the decision is solitary. So what, you can listen to everybody, but then when you decide, you are alone but you have to be aware that you have to decide and that you cannot go on talking all the time. So I, we have to listen, but then we have to decide and we have to be aware that this is, this is something that the leader has to do. We have to decide at the end. This is one thing. Then 
Of course, finance is important. And, but it is, I think the most important thing is to empower people. I mean, you have to give them, they have to, be, to realize that they are promoting the university, that what you, they are doing is good for the development of the region, for the development of, of the country, for their own development. So we have to have them feel okay. So this is the, let's say the internal part of the university. And then there, we, the rector has the responsibility, mm -hmm. and I think this is very important, to show the university to the world. So, I mean, we like it has been said before, we talk with ministers, we have the phone of uh, everybody in the, in the, I never thought I could do it. So, uh, you, you, and you are listened. So that's another thing and you can, so this is quite important. You have, I had a very good relationship with uh, the Minister of Science and Technology and but whenever I had a problem, we have to be able, we have to be able to talk, and we have to know that we are the responsible for the projection of the university. Hmm. So this is the, of course, like I said before, financing is very important, but at least in Portugal, it's very difficult, and it is can be a barrier. And I must say that it probably some of the projects that I had of uh, more. Um, easing the men, a women's life, like having a uh, childcare or something. I didn't do it because of a financial issues. And I think this is also important. So mm -hmm. this is, I mean, we are a public university, so we receive money. We can, we can, of course we have mo most of the money that we use. Of course we have money from the government, but it never, it doesn't even pay salaries. So everything is come from research projects. So this is a this is a problem. Um, I mean, it's not a problem; it's it's a fact. <laughs> so of course, financing is important. We have to be creative, but the most thing is projecting the idea, the university, giving, give, getting people to be proud of what they what they are part of. I think this is quite, and I think this is a characteristic also um, more uh, that. Women are more sensible to the fact that they need to have everybody, uh, they have to listen to everybody. So they are probably a bit more, I mean, they, maybe this is the, the mother in ourselves, I don't know. But I think they are more important. They, they are more, 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 they have more care for this thing. And I think this is quite important. That's really very helpful. Our our, our three questions so far have, have started with, is finance, in a sense, the most important limiting factor of you, for you? And you've mentioned it as a challenge, uh, but you're talking about empowering people, listening to people, mm. uh, creating a sense of purpose in your institution of working mm. for the common good. Uh, and Anne's mentioned that as well. And Tunji, how does finance fit in your list of you know, priorities, the most important things you've got to focus yeah, on. Sure, of course, uh, the finance is the big issue also our university, especially the research funding. Uh, if you con uh, consider that uh, our university was is uh, public university and the government is giving uh, our uh, funds and financing mm -hmm. in these issues, but the research uh, funds is a little bit limited. That's why uh, the finance uh, also the big issue in our university. And other things, uh, we have uh, written uh, policies, uh, gender equality uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, aspects, but it's really difficult to realize it and internalization it uh, due to uh, mm -hmm. cultural uh, behaviors. And a culture that values uh, the contributions, perspectives, and experiences of women leaders and fosters a sense of belonging and a psychological uh, security be uh, created. And other uh, things, uh, maybe expanding uh, women's access to networks and opportunities mm -hmm. uh, that can help them advance mm -hmm. and uh, careers and the skills. Uh, if uh, the researchers or the, uh, the academic staff, uh, if they can, uh, they can uh, do it, uh, they can uh, reach this kind of networks. But uh, I think there is a necessary to put a kind of uh, 
uh, facilitator and accelerator, accelerator uh, and motivating to this uh, woman uh, leadership. Probably. Yeah, there are uh, many uh, uh, written uh, politics and aims, but uh, not so easy to uh, to put it realize in a short period. Uh, probably it takes uh, time. It's difficult to change the cultural uh, behaviors, cultural uh, things. It's been it's been said by a, a, a former politician from New Zealand and academic. A social science academic Marilyn Waring that society only prioritizes for action things that can count. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is really mm -hmm. quite difficult. Mm -hmm. In in the United Kingdom, we have a program called the uh, Athena Swan program, which is an accreditation program, which is now also used in Ireland, which uh, encourages you to promote women in STEM institutions mm -hmm. and to make. Uh, available your data. Mm -hmm. So, can I add something about uh, on this uh, matter? Uh, at a webinar I attended uh, yesterday uh, on uh, women and intellectual property, accelerating innovation and uh, create creativity. Uh, in this webinar, it was uh, underlined that closing the gender gap uh, would take. Uh, 60 to 200 years, depending on the geography and uh, country. Uh, mm -hmm. According mm -hmm. to the data of uh, World uh, Economic Forum, uh, I'm really mm -hmm. surprised uh, that uh, the most optimistic period is 50 or uh, 60 uh, years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is this is mm -hmm. big issue. Big, this is big uh, trouble. Uh, uh, I think I think so. The cultural things cultural behaviors it's not easy to to move it so can i come back to you Anne, and say what about this idea about we will prioritize for action things that we measure and what kind of i mean you know what kind of data should we might now be looking to capture and it's very difficult to capture information about culture unconscious bias how you develop confidence unless you use this technique digital storytelling telling you stories mm -hmm. any thoughts on that Anne? I know it's a I know it's a tough one. Yeah, I I think it. Uh, um, yeah, it's a tough one. But I I think that uh, I mean, I mean, with the 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 digital age that we are we're actually in, I think that that may actually be uh, a powerful way uh, of of doing this. At the same time, I think that. We are different countries at sort of different stages, so so you would have to yeah try to find ways of of doing it, helping, uh, helping depend uh, depending a little bit about the depending on the sort of the the regional uh, cultural structure too, uh, because um, I I mean. Uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, say that uh, numbers are not interesting. I think uh, sort of commenting to one of the questions, I mean, what I would do, I think that, well, what you have to do is as a leader, you have to set some targets and then work with them. And then you know that it, it's hard to get there, but okay. But then you have to, to work uh, to get there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm talking to my deans. Uh, I mean, I know in, in some areas, there are far too few female, both associate professors and full professors. And of course, then it's also hard to, to find uh, leadership uh, talents uh, within that cohort. So, 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 but I know that they work on it and, and, and actually are my male um colleagues they are very much aware of the problem but we they don't do not know exactly how to deal with it in Norway actually industry is really pulling the best out they also need they need more female leaders in industry too so so we are actually competing <laughs> with the same talents but yeah. uh, but I I think that uh, that uh, uh, really thinking about if you could tell stories I mean role models, that's certainly very, very important uh, uh, in this uh, context. And, and if we would 
would utilize the digital surface, uh, I mean, for some for this purpose that that may be quite valuable. And I think uh, uh, that uh, Tanji, you were saying that about sort of giving uh, leadership courses, I think there's a lot of things that that could be made available and easily avail available so that you at least have some background for 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 uh, for a start. Yeah. Very, um, very helpful. And, yeah. and um, one of our participants in the webinar has just put in a, a question for you all to think about following on from what Tanji said about, you know, this is also 50 to 60 years before we get any shift uh, in diversity. They, they want each of you to tell us what you would want to see changed in either your university or your country to make diversity go faster. Mm -hmm. Anna, can I come to you first? How are we going to make, you know, ramp up our activities to make things move faster? We we can't hear you, Anna. You're on you're on mute. Yes. Okay. So, like Anne said before, one thing that or or, or yes, I think was Anne. Uh, I mean, the numbers are important. No. So, one of the things that we have done here in Amonet. So you know that by European law, all institutions to apply to uh, uh, a research project or a project at, at Europe, we have to have a gender equality plan. Yeah. So everybody now has a gender equality. So the point is, are we going to, I mean, do we control? Do, do we know that we are achieving or not? Or do we just have an, a gender equality plan? One of the things that we have done is that I talked with the agency for the, the courses evaluation or the evaluation. How we always have someone that will be focused on following if the gender equality plan is being applied and what are the results. So this makes the institute, I think, I hope, that the institutions to get aware that they have act to control the gender equality plan, so they have to be able to, to achieve what they propose themselves. So I think that's quite an important uh, an important thing, that, and I think this is one way that we can do it, is that we monitor, we have numbers that we want to achieve, and we have to be aware that we have to control if we are achieving or not. Uh, as a curiosity, I must say that I contacted all the people that are associated with Amonet to see if they wanted to be, I mean, to be able to include on the, the commissions that are evaluating the institutions. And I still had just one answer, which is sometimes we also have a problem. I mean, we think this is very important just when someone makes a webinar or makes a symposium or makes or something. And then day to day, we don't have time to, to, to dedicate to this. And this is another issue. We have to be aware this is a problem and we want to solve it. And of course, this is a minor problem. I mean, it's not a minor problem. In Europe, compared to the other parts of the world, I mean, Africa, Asia, and so on, this is a minor problem probably compared to other things but it's our problem and we are obliged to be able to at least improve i mean i don't want to solve everything but reduce a little bit the number of years that we will achieve equality i mean this is probably a target that we will want to achieve thank thank you for that and and tunji what, what do you feel about this yeah how can, uh, how can we move faster yeah sure uh, I think traditional uh, approach uh, it will not be uh, enough to solve and uh, facilitate or uh, uh, handle these kind of challenges. We also need, I think so, we also need a results-oriented approach and innovative and uh, groundbreaking activities in order to close this gap uh, faster. For example, uh, the world of artificial uh, intelligence is entering our uh, lives more and more. Uh, a big part of uh, lives, uh, our lives, uh, will pass here uh, in the future. 
there are important uh, warnings uh, that we should not carry the uh, uh, prejudices regarding mm -hmm. uh, the discrimination between men and women into this uh, mm -hmm. this world. Mm -hmm. uh, as women, uh, we should not forget that uh, our involvements in every every process and every field uh, that requires to struggle uh, will contribute especially to the uh, next generation, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are some uh, suggestions also uh, I can uh, list. Sharing the best uh, practices and success mm -hmm. stories uh, of organizations and individuals who have uh, implemented a positive mm -hmm. approach and achieved positive results for women's uh, leadership. And creating uh, platforms for uh, dialogue, exchange, and learning uh, about the challenges and opportunities uh, for women's uh, leadership among uh, different uh, stakeholders. And in order to uh, disseminate uh, the process of women's leadership, news from social media, newsletters, uh, blogs, podcasts, and uh, webinars uh, like today's. Uh, organizing uh, events, um, campaigns, workshops, seminars, and panels to raise awareness, uh, train, uh, inspire, and empower uh, women leaders uh, and leaders uh, candidates also. Uh, to increase uh, of the awareness, uh, what can we do? Probably addressing and uh, challenging the gender uh, bias and stereotypes that uh, limit uh, women's potential and opportunities and uh, providing uh, more uh, role models and uh, mentors for women uh, who expi aspire uh, the, to leadership uh, positions and uh, creating uh, more uh, flexible uh, and supportive work environments that allow women uh, balance their work and family uh, responsibilities and expanding probably uh, women's access to networks and uh, opportunities uh, that can help them advance and uh, their careers and uh, skills. Yeah, uh, this is uh, my, my suggestions. There's a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. our can homework I... is a little bit uh, long listed. Oh, but going back to something Anne said about encouraging women uh, into management and leadership roles. Not everyone has the confidence, Anna, that, that you had. It needs careful curation of that mm -hmm. female talent and, and uh, they need not to be frightened of taking on these very tough roles. You three are wonderful leaders. These are tough roles, you know, they're hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to do at the younger end of the scale uh, before people begin to become heads of department, you know, leaders uh, of, of their faculties? Is there anything in your experience that we can, we can do to encourage these very young women onto the path that say, Anna, you know, you were, you were encouraged to get onto very early? Can I, can I come to Anne first and then I'll come to you, Anna, and then Tunji? just to see if there's anything that we might do innovatively at that young age? Uh, well, I think that, um, uh, I mean, for the young age, I think, I mean, I, coming back to what I was saying, I mean, really uh, within, uh, when you as a lead, uh, with the leaders that they they need to nurture their talents whether they're going to be go into leadership uh, or i mean to become the very strong uh, research leader or sort of an, an institutional uh, or a sort of a, a leadership in 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 the sense we're talking about today so i think that that this is very important uh, i mean really to nurture the different careers uh, search for talent. I mean, I'm asking, I mean, we're asking our department heads, I mean, do you have sort of talents? Do you think that there are some talents there that you could actually see? I mean, and, and then you could guide them, find find roles that they, so they you can do it a little bit step by step, uh, because that that's what you're doing also with your academic career. And I think we, some of the, the 
the things we are doing with the careers, we should also uh, uh, do in in, uh, in in really attracting then these these um, these uh, talents. Because as, well, at least my experience is that if you're going to uh, succeed as a leader at the university or uh, yeah at, or having a leadership also at the department level, which is actually quite challenging. Uh, uh, you need to have um, you have need to have a strong scientific position. So you have to build this CV. You have to to carefully think about. I mean, what can you do now? And not, not what can what you what? How do I put things into my portfolio? And then also, I think that especially perhaps if it's childcare, I mean, many things that you need to to do. Then you have to think. Yeah, be flexible. Think about what what are the main things to do now. What can we do another year? And and I mean, because they really need some support. And 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 in that context, I also think that mentoring is actually also a key word. But yeah. I, 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 sort of leaders that understand how to develop their uh, their personnel, and then use mentors. And we have actually had, I mean, with not very much money, but we've had some programs, for example, if, if for promotion to uh, to full professor, which is a system in Norway, that we have some funds so that they could actually spend some time getting the last things put together to to really make that step. And, and that you could also think of extending towards a leadership career. And, yeah. progr and programs for that, I think. Yes, I, I, I certainly agree with you. You've all, you've all mentioned mentoring yeah. in one way, shape or other as being important. Anna, just quickly on this, uh, you know, encouraging young talent. <clears throat> I think it has to be mentorship. But in, there are, a, a, well, mentors we already talked about, but there are a cultural issue that we have to change. Mm -hmm. But I, the thing that I said, I mean, women usually, it's not well, I mean, at least in Portugal, considered when a woman, I mean, it's one's power. I mean, power, it's not power, in fact, it's just a role as a leader. So it's not mm -hmm. power, but this is what is usually said so and then mm. people say that it, it's not they don't want to be called as someone that wants power or the other thing that i usually say which mm. is that men are have personality and women's are stubborn and this is a they don't want to be considered as being stubborn yeah so these are the three the things that in cultural we should change mm -hmm. what i don't know what we can do and and is to change men's mentality in in you know at least in portugal because of child care this is a problem i mean this is something that we cannot change women have babies so how do we cope with this and this is something i mean there is a, in portugal there are several laws for uh, the time for parentality so it and it has not been now now been extended for women and for men, but not a lot of men use it. So I think this is something that has to be, I don't know what to say to young people when they say, I want to have a child, but in fact, we can have a child and go on working. I mean, and go again to work. I mean, I, I had an operation, a, a very tough one. And after two weeks I was working. So. But it is not very well seen by the society. If a yeah. woman said, okay, I had the baby, but now after two weeks or a month, I go on with a limited schedule or something, but it's not very well seen. So this is the point where I still have some, some hmm. shadows in my head. <laughs> but a lot of them also, it's not the only one, but yeah. this is what. Uh, could I then, comment? Yeah, I comment of course. Very so. briefly, because I think that, that actually what they did in Norway they they made a requirement at a point uh, where if you want, we have about a year parental leave. And if you're going to help have the full time, the father will have to do part of the part of the, the leave. 
So I think that uh, that that I mean you have I mean sometimes you I mean there are some political measures I mean you cannot solve it within as a as a university rector but but there are uh, things that that's doable and I think uh, being in a country where we have a full coverage of daycare for children uh, in in principle for children above year one one year of age that makes a big difference yeah. But it's not so. There's no magic because still yeah. I have far too few professors within the STEM areas, yeah. uh, and and that's a, that's a long road. We are working hard on getting uh, students to the STEM fields. Uh, for example, now we've been working uh, for years to increase the number of ap female applicants for, for, for the, our engineering programs. And some of them are quite good. I mean, biochem uh, chemistry and biotechnology is, of course, good. But also now, uh, civil engineering is 40%. But as you were also saying, within the ICT, it's still work to be done. Yeah. But we are, I mean, we just have to do it all the time promote it and, and talk to the young ones, show that it's possible. So we have been working hard on that, but, but it takes quite some years to get them through the system. Yeah, I, I, I think we, we hear that, but uh, paternal, uh, you know, maternity leave is interesting, making sure that uh, the, the fathers take time off uh, as well. Um, and not every country has that. Mm yet but it's a certain step on the way. Kunji anything you'd like to add to this? Yeah, I, I, I would like to add some uh, more things uh, on this uh, issue. Uh, probably by establishing clear uh, and transparent criteria for uh, the position and leadership positions of, uh, also it can be ensured that women candidates are evaluated uh, and supported fairly uh, in the selection process. It's really uh, important things. And training and coaching programs can be offered to, to increase the skills, confidence, and visibility of women who uh, aspire to or are already in the leadership uh, roles. And uh, other things they can recognize and uh, celebrate uh, the achievements and contributions uh, of women leaders in uh, academia at universities yeah, and uh, gender equality uh, more general uh, gender equality and diversity policies uh, and practices can be promoted at the institutional national and regional levels and the impact uh, of practices uh, can be monitored uh, it will be important uh, for uh, encourage uh, the young talents and and th th very well said. And it's wonderful for us to have all seen female leaders coming into Ivy League positions in uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard. Um, you know, it's it's been fantastic to see that development, but there's still far too few uh, across the board. Uh, coming to the the last direct question to you that I'd like to ask, as leaders and rectors. Um, each of you think about what what are you most proud of achieving during your period of leadership? I, I Who would like to go first? Anna, you go first. No, I didn't understand the, the question. What, I didn't. Sorry. What what are you most proud of uh, in terms of your achievements of, as a rector during your time? Oh. And go on, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well i'm not sure if i mean uh, this is a hard question uh but i i would just like to sort of end uh, sort of say that you know we have uh, at my university we ha i mean i have um uh three uh vice presidents uh and uh and a director on my sort of my closest team and then we are eight uh we have eight faculties and one university museum and these and so among uh my vice uh vice rectors i have two female and one male 
among the, the, the deans, remember my, our main profile, we have uh, among the eight deans, uh, I have six female deans. So and, you can yeah. be proud that you have encouraged and supported yeah. those yeah. women to come through to have a better gender balance. Yeah, but yeah, uh, and, yeah. so it's it's actually, <laughs> it's uh, on the other side, but I'm sure we can live with that for a while. I think we can live with that. <laughs> I, that that's absolutely fine. Chunji, what are you proud of? Uh, if I uh, want to give some numbers also, uh, increasing the uh, number of uh, women leaderships, is, uh, I'm proud of uh, this uh, issue. Uh, more or less, the fifty percent of the deans uh, are uh, women in our mm -hmm. and directors of uh, the uh, institutes and research centers also, and administrate not only for academic, uh, also administrative uh, states. Uh, some uh, head of the departments, uh, finance departments, and uh, human resources departments, etc. Uh, I try to uh, manage and uh, equalize uh, the numbers of uh, these uh, leaders and uh, encourage uh, also to students, female students, uh, to enter the research uh, activities uh, and we promote and uh, awarded uh, these uh, students and also young researchers uh to to encourage uh in research and uh, education uh states and also administrative duties also uh and uh, i brought off uh, uh, integrated uh, management uh, system and quality assurance uh, system in our uh, university uh more or less the 50, 60 uh, 65 percent of the uh, undergraduate uh, programs has been already accredited. All uh, the engineering programs and uh, sports programs and um, basic sciences programs uh, has been already uh, accredited. Uh, yeah, uh, the quality assurance uh, system has been already established in our uh, university. It's a really uh, great uh, honor uh, for me. Uh, of course, it takes time to internalization, uh, but uh, it's important to put in uh, the first milestone uh, on this on this issue. Well, it underpins excellence as well as helping with the yeah, uh, during, during the uh, uh, deanship uh, time uh, in engineering faculty, we have a. Uh, uh, EFQ, EFQM Excellency uh, Award. Uh, we have already awarded uh, this kind of things, uh, European Excellency uh, Award. Fantastic. And uh, Anna? Well, okay. The numbers are, well, I already said about the numbers, how many women we had at the end of the, on the services, administrative people, vice rectors, pro rectors, and so, and head of departments. And so this has, had a huge change, a huge change. And I think it's like mentors, mentors. I mean, it having the, the said that, okay, it's possible. Then, but the things that I liked most was we had, um, we had some, most of our students come from pa different parts of Portugal. So they are not from Everett. We don't even have enough students in Everett for the university. And we have a program which is count on us for the students when they come. So we teach them how to eat good instead of, you know, uh, McDonald's all the time. Uh, sorry for the, for the, for the names, but sorry for this. Um, and then how to equilibrate their financing, how to study, how, and it has been a success for this. I think this is important for the students to know how to, to, to live in the city, which is because it's a different, it's small city, and so this, I think it's important. Then we have the quality assurance that was already in place, but we have always been uh, developing and we had changed, we could attain most of the, the parameters that we had. And also we had a strategic plan with, I started with a strategic plan, of course, in 2014. And when we, you know, when I stepped out in 2022, most of the things have been, 
uh, built. I mean, we have opened a new school of, of health, which was important, it was the beginning. But I think that the fact that, and you know, I don't know if you, you don't know me, but I, sometimes I think a lot of things at the same time. And the fact that I could be sticked to the plan and always control if this was going to be done. I think for me, it was an achievement and I think yeah. for the university as well. So I think this quite, was quite important as, as and I, I, and the universities was very well known at the city. And we had a lot of things with, we could solve the problems with the municipality. So we had a, a problem which was science uh, to, uh, science at the city of and the science. So we went to to uh, schools to make presentations of science in order to see if the students can be, you know, push students to go to universities. And it was mostly on science and technology, which is the things that they show but they don't go. So I think this was the, the solving the problems with the municipalities, stick to the strategic plan, and having a more um, friendly environmental to to the students that arrive at the, at the, a city that they don't know at all. <laughs> thank you so much, Anna, and thank you all of our participants. You've all demonstrated um, exceptional qualities: the need for strategic thinking, the ability to lead by example, to promote cultural change and awareness. Uh, to, to actually be driven by evidence. I'm an epidemiologist, I love data, but I also know the power of storytelling. And the stories that you've told us today have been truly inspirational uh, and given us some insights into how we can overcome some of the barriers that, that uh, women in the future uh, and now are currently facing in being able to become leaders. We had one or two other questions from our audience about, you know, how can we promote more cooperation across our universities in Europe? Oh, my heart bleeds at the thought of Brexit. But that I doesn't mean that <laughs> Scotland and the United Kingdom isn't European. We are, and we must always strive to cross these mm. boundaries. They also asked, um, should leaders be appointed or elected? Mm. That, that's a difficult one because we all come from different systems. Oh, yeah, you know, that's and, a different. Mm. Yeah, thing. well, I'm actually, I'm actually appointed. You're appointed. Uh, my, yeah. So actually, I'm in charge of everything. Um, also, also. Uh, I mean, operations of the university. I mean, sort of there. I mean, yeah. But but. Um, uh, so we have uh, like uh, so it's a single point. Um, some some universities in Norway are electing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually quite happy that I'm appointed. So appointed. I'm I'm reporting to the board with an external uh, chair. Um, and uh, the main reason in in Norway, if it's if it's a point, if you if you if you elect the rector, then rector is uh, chairing the board. Okay, uh, and I think that uh, being a rector for me, I, I I'm happy that that uh, I'm appointed because then I have I'm having the full responsibility, and I think that finance, um, uh, premises, HR, they are supporting the main uh, purpose of the university, namely education, research, innovation, and dissemination. And 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 you to have this this put together uh, that is a strong point because if in, at least in Norway if you elect yeah. then you have an administrative line and yes. then you have have uh, have the rector and and that's sort of a division yeah. that I'm yeah so so I, from I my point of view hmm. I think it's very different in other countries where elected mm -hmm. rectors do have full authority and power and yeah. I can see Tinji. Uh, and mm. nodding at that. We're coming to the end of our webinar, colleagues. So I just want to thank you again for the questions from our participants, for your wonderful stories captured forever here now for further distribution. And it's great, gives me pleasure now to pass back to our wonderful chair, Gosen, who provides some final comments. 
Over to you, Gilson. Thank you so much. It has been such a wonderful session. I think we have had wonderful and very successful women leaders. So I was uh, uh, very happy to be able to organize these webinars. I mean, we are learning from each other's experiences. It's very, very important. And we hope that in the future, we will have more female leaders. Let's make it faster and try to nurture the culture from the childhood of the girls and make them to compete for leadership, uh, to lead the groups and to, uh, to be visible in the, in the society. We should continue our endeavor in order to make the life better for uh, women uh, academics and women leaders. Well, I don't know how to thank you and um, our chair, P Pamela Giles, and our speakers, Anne Borg, Anna Costa uh, Freitas, and Tunjai Duerol for their very valuable contributions. I also would like to thank to our participants joining us in this webinar. Last but not least, my thanks goes to Cesar, IAU, IAUP, and UNICA for their support. And I hope to see you joining us to our future programs. Thank you so much. <laughs>